In the past year or so, the biggest feature to come to gaming keyboards without a doubt has to be Rapid Trigger. Essentially, this allows you to reset the actuation point from anywhere on the switch. Compared to a normal switch where you'll have an actuation point halfway through the switch, normally around two millimeters, then you'll bottom out around four millimeters, and then you have to come back up to that two millimeter point to cut transmission to your computer. Now with Rapid Trigger, you can reset it anywhere on the switch and at a lower distance like 0.1 millimeters, which is insane. This reaps multiple benefits, especially for us gamers. Now Wooten kicked it off, but now we have some other contenders that are playing ball with them. Namely, this SteelSeries Apex TKL Refresh, they're back with their Omni 2.0 switches and the Razer Huntsman V3 Pro, which just came out recently. We're gonna take a look at all these keyboards in a bunch of different areas like build, the switches, the keycaps, and oh yes, there will be sound tests. And of course, by the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you guys which one of these keyboards you should be picking up. My Wu Ting is modded, so it's not gonna be a true one-to-one. -one. I am going to refer to the stock version of my Wu Ting when I do the comparisons, but I know what people are gonna say. This is not a fair comparison, and you're right, it's not. <laughs> So mainly I'm gonna be focusing on the SteelSeries and Apex since they are the newer ones and then kind of sprinkle in some of the stock thoughts from the Wu team. Now the first topic we're gonna to talk about is form factor, which could be a deal breaker for some of you out there as Wu Ting only comes in a 60%, whereas Razer and SteelSeries are both offering their keyboards in a 60%, a 10 keyless, and a full size. Right off the bat, that might cut off half of you from getting the Wu Ting 60HE if you need the F row, if you need the home row keys, if you need the arrow keys, that will be a deal breaker. So that is where we're gonna start. And that's what you gotta think about. Also, when you're going up to a 10 key list, you get things like multimedia keys. The Razer has a dial on it, as well as two multimedia buttons. And of course, the Steel Series right here has a freaking screen on it with a scroll wheel and a button, which you can adjust the keyboard settings with. So right off the bat, as you can see, there's a lot of value that you're gonna get with a 10 key list over a 60% keyboard. Now you can control stuff using the function in a different layer with the Wu-Ting 60HE, but a lot of people just want it plug and play, boom, right there on the actual keyboard. And come on, an LED screen? That's pretty cool. I thought I would like the Steel Series screen the most, but they limit you on how much you can adjust the actuation point on here, which we will get into more later. But it only goes down to 0.2 and the max is 0.14 to the lowest. So it almost feels like they want you to install their software. And we're gonna talk about their software later. Don't worry about that. Now the original wu -Ting did have a plastic case. It feels the cheapest out of the three. The Apex is second best. It still has kind of like a plasticky feeling to it, kind of cheap. The Razer feels the best to me with the brushed aluminum look on the sides, feels pretty nice in the hand. It's got the glossy by gamers on the bottom. It's a nicely built keyboard and it looks nicer on your desk than the Apex, which has this weird border around it. But at the end of the day, I do wish that the SteelSeries and the Razer would come out with closed case because you're gonna get a lot of leaked sound coming out of both the SteelSeries and the Razer. So yeah, that's one place where I like the Wu-Ting a little bit better since it has more of a traditional case. Obviously this one does have a modded case. I'm using the Wilbotech Salvation. And that is another bonus or another plus is that this can be transferred from one case to another. So the Wu-Ting really has that going for itself. Whereas these, you're just stuck with whatever case that they give you. And this case has a freaking leaf spring in it. So I almost made it like a gasket mount, which is pretty absurd for the value that you're getting out of the Wu-Ting. So the sky's the limit with the Wu-Ting, the other ones, not so much. So for the stock build and overall aesthetic, I will give it to the Razer. So when it comes to keycaps, I'll tell you this right now, the Wu-Ting ones, I tossed them out. That should tell you how much I like those. Within a week of using the Wu-Ting 60HE, I swapped off of it and I went to a GMK set just because it just feels so much better. The Razer, I would say is second place. And then in first place, I would put the SteelSeries Apex. They're a little smoother. All of them have the DualShock PBT, but these are implemented a little bit differently. They're smoother to the touch and it doesn't make my skin crawl. But at the end of the day, all these are compatible. You can switch out any of these keycaps for the ones that you want, just like I've done on the Wu-Ting. I put a GMK set on here, so. Good visuals, good life, just suit up my 
Now let's talk about the switches. Each one gets you to the same place. So the Razer is using their analog switches. Wu-Ting is using a magnetic hollow effect switch, which is their Lecker switches from Gateron. And then we got the OmniPoint 2.0 switches from SteelSeries, which is their version of a magnetic hollow effect switch. So we have two that are similar and one that is an analog, but at the end of the day, they all do the same thing and get you to the same spot. The way Razer does their switches is they have these stabilizer bars and because of that, it gives it a bouncier feel, almost like the switch wants to bounce back at you when you push it down. The Wu-Ting and the Steel Series have more of a traditional switch, which, you know, when you hold it down, it's not gonna be forcing itself back up at you since you have such a low actuation force. So on the Wu-Ting, I believe it's 40, on the Steel Series, it's 45, and on the Razer, it's 40, but the Razer feels slightly heavier than even the Steel Series, which is odd, which does play a factor and we will talk about later on in this video. Both the Wu-Ting and the Steel Series are both soldered in, so you cannot mod them. I mean, you can try to like Put some lube in there any kind of way but it's not going to be the same as the wooting which is hot swap you could take it out mod it lube it spring oil on it really get them to a place that you like them and fine tune them and in the end they sound and feel better than the other two competitors so when it comes to feel and sound i prefer the wooting and then I'd go with the Steel Series, and then the Razer is my least favorite. One category where all three of these really blew me away was the stabilizers. I mean, stock keyboards have come a long way from like the K70 from Corsair. I don't know if you guys remember that rattly mess. Like this is, I know it's not like the best sounding thing in the world, but it's decent for a gaming keyboard. I mean, yeah, that's good. I mean, it's a dry switch. I don't, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not bad. This is the Razer. It's not bad. It's 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 passable, right? It's really passable. So now that we've talked about all the components of the keyboard, we're going to do a sound test on it. So I will meet you back here after the sound test. Enjoy. Oh, oh, y'all are back already? Okay, let's get on with the video. So I've got to say, I've heard way worse than either of these keyboards and both are passable, especially for a gaming keyboard that's stock. SteelSeries has more of a thock and Razer has more of a clack and that's pretty much on brand with what we've been seeing for both of these companies in the past two to three years. And of course, Wu-Ting is just Wu-Ting, it's great. I modded it myself and if you're interested in how I modded it and what I modded it with, and then the Wu-Ting is just the Wu-Ting. If you're interested in what I did to my Wu-Ting and my modding process, I'm gonna link that video down below, so go ahead and check that out. One thing I do want to note before we go on to the software is look at this these guys are little tricksters they put their normal red switches up here their omni switches are down here so they are really pulling a fast one on us they're not giving us the whole thing and even like the home rows even the arrow keys are not Omni Point 2.0 switches, they're just the regular red. So what if somebody uses these to game? Still serious, why like, it's not that many switches, more. Just, just fill the whole keyboard with your switch. It's not a big deal. Like, just do it. Like, that's crazy to me that they're doing that. Well, I guess they're trying to like cut corners, save money, I don't know, but that's weird. <laughs> Now, I don't know how SteelSeries has managed this, but they've managed to make a worse software or less better or 
eh, less worse software than Razer Synapse. When you open up the software, you're greeted with some freaking ads for their products. Like what in the world are they thinking? Like if I want your products, I'm gonna go to your website or go to Amazon or go to Best Buy to get your product. I don't need a program on my desktop showing off your products. Like that's just weird to me. You have to scroll down to actually get to all the settings for the keyboard, the rapid trigger, the memory settings, the actuation settings. And like I said, you can't even change the actuation down to point one just using the board. You have to download this software. So you're gonna have this piece of malware <laughs> Okay, so maybe it's not malware, but it's it's getting there. It's getting there, right? But anyways, once you're once you got it set up, you can just set it and forget it. Um, so there's that. On Razer Synapse, it is getting better. I don't care what the haters say. It is getting better. In Razer Synapse, you can change over between the different modes that you have. You can switch over to like an FPS rapid trigger mode to change the actuation and the rapid trigger. I actually like this feature in Razer Synapse where it shows you how much you're pressing down the switch so you can visualize it and see. Maybe you don't need to put the actuation for so high or so low. You can see kind of how you're reacting to your gaming. Me personally, for all three of these, I just put everything at 0 0.1, 0 0.1, or if I'm you know in a typing mode, I switch over over to a different profile. And that's another place where I really like this feature of Razer, where you can hold the function key and then the home row keys and the insert. These are all the different profiles, six profiles on the keyboard, which is stored on memory. So if I'm gaming, I can just easily hit the FPS one or my typing mode, and then it's good to go. Like I don't have to go into the software, switch it over like in the boot, or like I don't have to scroll through a LED screen like on the Steel Series. It actually is quite faster on the Razer. And with Razer, you can also hit function and tab to go through and bring up the little dots and change the actuation point straight on the actual keyboard. So it'll show these uh, white dots and then the green one will show you where the actuation is and it goes from, it starts at 0.1 and it goes up by 0.4 millimeters each time. And then you can also change the rapid trigger on the actual keyboard and, and see it visually as well to make sure you're on the right one. So you can go from 0.1 to one millimeter. Whereas on the Steel Series, you can only go up to 0.2. So if it changes, anything changes, you're on the road, you're gonna need software to change it. So I think just in, in usability, Razer has Steel Series B in that regard and Wu Ting. But Wu Ting is the king as it has a web based browser software. You don't even have to download their software, you can do everything there. Downloads to the keyboard, like I said, you just set it and forget it. I've rarely gone into the Wooting settings other than showing you guys about these keyboards. So the actuation point on the Wooting is a little bit lower, it's 1.5, whereas on the Steel Series and Razer is 0.1 millimeters. Now, like I said, I switched between all three of these keyboards and the performance was great across the board. Like I literally could not tell. The only thing that really stood out to me with these keyboards was that the Razer Huntsman V3 Pro, the bounciness doesn't keep the switch in place. So I found a lot of the times my movement would be cut, getting cut. I would come to a complete stop and I'm like, I didn't even lift my finger up because I'm so used to the Wu Ting and the Steel Series where you know, I press it down and it kind of holds. It doesn't move on its own too much. With this one, it moves. Like you, like it. You give it some, some, some room to move. It's gonna move on you and it's gonna stop. So it takes some getting used to. I'm not saying it's worse. I'm just saying give it some time if it does happen to you. Personally, I just feel more comfortable with the Wu Ting and the Steel Series for this reason, though. I think the Steel Series is rivaling the Wu Ting at this point. Wu Ting just has the switches going for it, so I might give the slight edge to the Wu. But man, the Steel Series is definitely no joke. So we've talked about Rapid Trigger, but I want to kind of drill in the point of why it's so important in each one of these keyboards, because I think you know you'd be happy with any one of these keyboards. You know, Rapid Trigger for me has really changed the way I play Valorant. I mean, before I would have shots flying over their head because in Valorant, you have to come to a complete stop, you know, and I was getting out strafed or I wouldn't even see the bullet or the person. I just be dead. I get headshot. I'm done. Right. So 
with this keyboard, I find that I'm doing it to other people. I'm, I'm like surprising myself just how accurate I am. Like it is like a dart, like I'm darting people. And then when I'm like gun battling people, I'm able to like strafe out of the way and kind of use my movement to my advantage, making myself hard to hit. Meanwhile, being completely accurate and they're just shooting over here. Over here, I see the bullets going here into the wall. It just makes such a big difference. It's a competitive edge. If you're playing CSGO and Valorant, you need one of these keyboards. I don't care which one you get, you need one of them. And it can also translate to games like Call of Duty or you know Apex or the new finals game, right? There's a ton of strafing that is involved with tracking more than people even realize. You know, people aren't, the best trackers in the world aren't just, you know, going back and forth like this, like tracking. They're actually using their movement with the mouse. So that is one thing to keep in mind. If you're one of those players too, having nice crispy movement is gonna pay off. Okay, so one other thing I want to talk to you guys about is the pricing. I purposely left it for the end of the video because I want to give you guys context before we move into the final decision of what you should buy. Razer is coming in at 220 for the TKL. The Wu Ting 60% is coming in at 180, and the Apex Pro TKL is coming in at about 145. So bang for the buck, Steel Series is up there. It's giving you similar performance to these other ones at a fraction of the cost. Now the Wu Ting is still up there, 180. It was the original keyboard with the rapid trigger on it, so they got to charge that price. But now the other ones are coming out, which is a good thing. I still don't mind paying for it. It's because of the uniqueness and being able to case swap this. The sky's the limit with it and you see it they're coming out with different switches like their yellow switches that are lighter um, that compare to the other ones they also coming out with their own cases so they're doing a lot of things that kind of separate themselves from these other two keyboards and hopefully in the future we get a tkl from them as well now the razor i think is the outlier obviously at 220 dollars these other ones give similar performance if not better i like the switches on the other ones better compared to the Razer. And at 220, I think unless you're like a pro that's traveling a lot, the Wu Ting or the SteelSeries Apex is gonna be plenty for you. Now, in conclusion, to wrap this up, I told you I would tell you guys conclusively which one you should buy. And of course, there's not a one size fits all. I just wanna preface this and say this. I'm gonna give you my thoughts to the best of my ability. Now, the Razer, it does a really good job at like usability, like I said, with the you know onboard changes. There's not much wrong to say about it. The pricing was in. The Wu Ting does a lot right. It won in the software category. The performance is good. And you get the customization. And then on the still series, the pricing, the bang for the buck has to be the best by far. You get similar performance to the other ones. It won in the keycap category. The switches are up there with the Lecker switches. And out of the box, if you force me to pick one of these keyboards, I think I would go for this. If I was keeping it stock, I would go for this one. If you are a person that does like to mod, obviously you gotta go with the Wu Ting. And I just think, like I said, the Razer is just an outlier here. It, just, I think they need to come down on the price a little bit to make it more competitive with the Apex. If it was around the same price, then I would definitely pick the V3 Pro, but since it's brand new, the price might take a while to drop. So that is my conclusion for somebody new or getting into gaming keyboards, Apex Pro TKL, the refreshed, 2023 version all right so that is going to do it for this video guys i hope you have enjoyed it it has been your boy bt don't forget to like share comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one